I remember watching you. Uh, uh, yes, please weigh in, Last Miles. We would love for you to weigh in. Uh, mm. So uh, we're, we're just talking about, we're, right now we're just talking about a little bit of um, what's going on with virtual machines and Windows subsystems for Linux and whether we should pick either of them. Uh, uh, I, 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 you know what? I would like you, if you could tell us, is it possible to run, uh, was it these days, Solace or one of the Solaris? Um, Dennis? Okay. Sorry, Dennis. So, Dennis, let me ask you, because, um, I mean, you've got so much experience with Solaris. In fact, you remind me a lot of the people that I learned from. Uh, well, that's why I watch you on occasion, uh, a- including that that entire bottle of wood <laughs> Dude, it's so much fun watching you sometimes. I really enjoy it. Uh, you worked on the kernel. See, that's what I I, I, did, I watched you talk about working on the kernel a little bit, and I'm sure you have a lot of lot of insight into that. Um, but but so so here's my question related to the beginners here. This is a little, this is a little segment for the beginners that I'll eventually sub uh, put on YouTube. Uh, so my question is, uh, which do you think? So can you can you run Solaris? Uh, Sun OS or any of the older versions of it. I know, um, you know, I'm embarrassed to say I don't remember the latest incarn- incarn- incarnation of the name. Uh, but which which one was the one that they that they that they put together? Do you guys remember that? Uh, it's not necessarily safer. It depends on lots. Zones are LPAR are different to the desktop implementation. So how would you how would you phrase that better? Uh, you just Kimu to run Solaris binary. Okay, Kimu to run a Solaris binary. Very nice. Um, uh yes uh you know i so i kind of want to talk about Kimu on its on its own uh and this is another one of the big reasons that yeah i'm 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 sure i've heard you agree with me already on this uh i I really teach people to learn vi instead of instead of vim uh the vim isms at least initially and if they want to you know lock themselves into their own computer uh using vim or emacs something that's fine uh so virtual machines um I think we pretty much have made the case that a virtual machine is pretty much the way to go. Uh, another thing I'm going to say here is too is it's uh, uh, simulates uh, simulates uh, what will eventually run uh, eventually run on on a uh, simulates what will eventually run uh, on on hardware. Uh, so again, this is for a beginner making the choice. I think we can pretty much uh, put a thumbtack in this video at this point on this particular topic and move on to another topic. Uh, VMs as a safety thing at all purposes, consolidation, not security. Okay, so, um, all right. I mean, I'm trying to think because you would still have to run an underlying VPN if you didn't want to dox your IP. You got that. Um, I consider it safer. So, Ramingo, I've heard it used a lot in the security field. People will will make uh, they'll use a, a v, they'll use a uh, if if somebody breaks out and you and they break into your system, see what I'm saying? If so, say you're you're doing you're doing you know some kind of thing while you're hacking, uh, and if you actually get malware, it will only affect the the virtual machine and not your raw your core system. That's what I mean by safety. So maybe I should say sandbox, uh, sandbox. Uh, when combined with the VPN. I got to read all these great things. The original Sun Microsystem plan was to allow for hardware domain separation in the mid-range to upper-range enterprise products. Uh, they would allow for CPU mem isolation redundancy within some large 1M type class machines. Within each domain hardware, we install the Unix operating system. Inside those, we can create kernel zones or containers. Nice. Uh, yeah, that your low-level knowledge is so amazing to me. Uh, I mean, I, I made a Hello World kernel once. <laughs> a kernel mod with my mod probe back in the day there were there there were a bit past the j- the jail idea inside the bsd world hmm wsl2 equals advanced users on laptop battery uh <laughs> everyone else equals virtual box i think i kind of agree with that so uh Solaris containers. Oh wow, 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 wow! I didn't know Solaris even had containers. I I, I was running uh, SunOS for a long time uh, before it was Solaris. Uh, you know what? I really want to see a video of uh, from Mr. Dennis uh, is is the capturing the cultural rift that happened when SunOS became Solaris. Uh, that was that was an interesting time, uh, and I remember all the guys that taught me. 
uh, just having so much fun with that with that debate. Uh, but it's some people here may not be as interested. VMware security advisories, uh, yes, and and actually VirtualBox. So um, was it? Uh, what's the what's the competition they had in Seattle where they do poning? So VirtualBox has been pwned a lot of times too. Uh, things like that are a real threat. Yeah, people using VMware kind of stuff. Um, out of bounds related VMware hypervisors reported in VMware. Yes, uh, this is actually um, related to. Uh, there's a the Cyber War series. Uh, one of the episodes where Ben, the, the journalist, he was actually uh, given an award later for not giving up some of his sources. He uh, covered. There's one episode where he covers a um, a a zero day competition and. The top two zero day awards went to people who had found uh, zero day vulnerabilities in VMware and, and, and sorry, VirtualBox. So, so using a VM uh, might be safer in, in sense of a sandbox, but you might actually be putting yourself at, in jeopardy in different ways that we don't even know about. So that's that's a really interesting context for all that conversation. Appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, let's see here. They were then we built the new ZFS file system on top ZFS. Oh man, the main hardware globals and then the container would be branded by to the ZFS storage. We use uh, storage tech and HP three par and then Oracle Exabyte fiber sun storage. Yes, <laughs> I remember the Exabyte stuff. Uh, oh god, we used, that's back in the old days when we actually used to do sand storage. Uh, I, I I've been out of the enterprise for a while, but I have not seen a, a sand storage array uh in a very long time do they still exist so we'll, we'll we'll geek out a little bit here we got beginners here too but uh my primary project was to port all this to the ibm mainframe there for 10 years uh computer i actually yeah it sounded like you worked on some of the risk stuff too uh the risk port for the early solaris port to risk or wasn't source always on risk i can't remember uh computer world developers yes Yes, that's the one. That's the article. I actually saw you talking about this article on your stream the other day. Uh, and IBM was buying out Sun at the time. Oracle stepped in and made it. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> uh, cheers. <laughs> hmm. Oh, you were on the Sun Governance Board for Open Solaris? That is so cool. What what, it, what was the new name? Um, it, it had a... Was it Illumi... Was it Illumina? I want to say... Uh, do you know what I'm talking about? So, what was... Yes, Illuminos, yes. What was... What is... Uh, is that... Yeah, Illumos. I, I, I briefly played around with this. Yeah, Open India. Illumos, so for the rest of you guys watching... <laughs> so, Mr. Dennis Last Miles here, uh, who's, you know, a very prominent, famous streamer here on Science of Tech on Twitch. I'm really happy to have him here. Uh, he's, you know, he's been streaming and about his his development on the on the Solaris kernel for a very long time and he's got you know kernel brain <laughs> he's got kernel brain different than you know <laughs> than my brain uh, Illum uh Illumos is a free and open source unix operating system uh you know he I put him in the same league with like gamozo right who's writing his own os's emulations anyway it is based on open Solaris, which was based on system five uh system five release four in the berkeley software yes uh, so it was it was a BSD based. That's what I was wondering because I I tried to tell the beginners all the time about something as simple as the PS command not working <laughs> properly depending on what system you're on, uh, and that it does exist. The other thing too, uh, Dennis, that that uh, that a lot of beginners don't want to accept, uh, and they just say I'm you know just an angry old guy, is that that you need to prepare to work on systems besides, uh, you know. Arch Manjaro or even you know a Debian based system. You need to you need to prepare yourself to work on all Unix systems if you want to be in in that field. If you want to be in system administration, site reliability engineering, even though I hate that term. Uh, Illumos compromises kernel device drivers, systems libraries, and utilities. So so yeah, so Illumos was sounds like was the open Solaris extension. At least it was a fork. Is that right? I'm almost uh, these days trying to sort out a new libc bug in the floating point except oh man holy cow that looks pretty scary uh, I was filed a bug with sourceware last night oh uh, thank god for you dot cgi 
That was my official title at Teleport in Oregon. Uh, yeah, I was the CGI guy in 96. Uh, <laughs> it was the F4. Mm hmm. This is the best crossover event in history. Oh, I just think I'm, 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 if I'm, if I'm blushing, I'm a little nervous because, because this guy knows his shit, man. <laughs> I mean, I have fun. I have fun and I, and I look at my stuff, but yeah, yeah. And I mean, I don't want to encourage you, Dennis, but I equally respect your no fucks given <laughs> approach to life. Can I just say, <laughs> Uh, that'll probably get clipped forever, but I actually really sometimes I really enjoy that. He's like, I'm here, I'm doing my thing. I think the world could use more of that. People just making cool stuff and moving forward uh, and helping, right? And you know, opinions are good. Friday Rant stream is the best stream. <laughs> well, you know, it is what it is. I, I I've only got coffee in here at the moment. Um, you know, I'm I'm yeah. <laughs> So uh, we're looking at some Sun OS stuff uh, and some Solaris stuff. Um, you know what? Let's 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 educate let's educate the noobs here for a second about what actually exists out there besides Linux for a second. Okay, so let's change the status a bit. Let's say, what even is Solaris? Solaris. Uh, I'm gonna put uh, uh, guest uh, last miles. Is it? Is that okay? <laughs> because, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and well, FreeBSD is my is my big Unix these days. You know what? Okay, can we please talk about that? So, I, I a couple a couple of little little topics here, uh, or or Blastwave. Blastwave is Blastwave. All right, all right. Well, let's do that. Dennis Clark, uh, Dennis Clark, uh, yeah, Dennis Clark visit, uh, and so. I'm going to, I'm going to try as you're going to, you're going to laugh. I know Dennis is going to laugh his ass off at this, but I'm going to try to summarize Solaris for everybody else out there and it real, uh, really quickly. And I do want to do a, say just a quick little story. So once upon a time with Mr. Rob, uh, I actually worked at a company called teleport uh, in Oregon. It was an internet service provider and I, and I, did I get it right? All right. And I, and I told him, uh, uh, they actually, I had learned Perl. So it's a long, I've told that story before, but I, I was a Russian major. And, uh, I was a Russian major. And I'm just asking you, yeah, there they are. Hey, how's it going, Ace? Hey, he did a really cool thing. You guys need to go see, uh, how do you say your name? Asig's uh, video. Uh, yeah, he's definitely a legend. Ace, he did, um, he did a he he wrote um a what what is what would you call it he wrote he wrote a, an application in go that goes or i don't want to overstate it that goes around and grabs all the um uh the local proxies it's a pro he, like research goes through some proxies and does some some so we got a lot of good coders in the audience here anyway so i was a uh, proxy grabber yeah yeah i don't know why i was braining brain farting on that so so anyway i I can do one sentence thing. Solaris, there. See, there we have the from from the kernel coder's mouth. Solaris is an at t system V release five uh, port of the Unix to a commercial implementation with full SUV2 SUV spec compliance. Therefore, it is a good test bed for software compliance. All right. Uh, in in newbie speak, <laughs> it's a it's another version of Unix out there uh, that uh, came out, and I I my a son actually came from Stanford, from what I understand. Uh, the Stanford University Network. That's what son stood for. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Uh, and by the way, this is one of the reasons that I would go to Stanford if I were to ever teach or attend a school. Stanford keeps standing out to me for some reason. Uh, but primarily, you can watch this in um, Triumph of the Nerds uh, 2.01. Uh, Stanford University Network. Yep. And... And the guys at Sun, they and and this includes uh, the people who created 3Com, which then later on on to become you know Ethernet, which is what the internet is based on. Again, this is all covered in a documentary called um, Triumph of the Nerds uh, 2.1. It was like about the invention of the internet. It's really boring <laughs> compared to the other one, but anyway, they talk about it. And so Stanford University uh, allowed these guys who were doing this project, and I'm overly really summarizing what I saw summarized. 
uh, and they they created they so they created this this new operating system that was really popular and it was really uh, adopted by a lot of people uh, because because it wasn't AT and T, which well, how much was AT and T in the day, Dennis? Do you remember? What is this? It, isn't AT and T Unix per seat still like in the hundreds of dollars? It's like crazy. Now uh, Sun slash Lotus is largely considered dead, right? Well, not according to Dennis. <laughs> Dennis will tell you it's not dead, but uh, well, previous to Sun, I worked at SDI Unix. Oh no way, man! And the early Apollo systems. Used to be. Were you around for the whole? Uh, were you around for the whole next box stuff? It, did it? Didn't he? Pretty Oracle is still making a billion dollars on it uh, on 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 Unix AT and T. Who got the SCO license, by the way? Who pulled that one out? Because I thought I thought SCO had had a hold on to all the original AT and T license stuff, didn't they? Before they died. I'm just trying to trying to put the date on that. Was it Novell? It was Novell, right? And I was in Provo about that time, uh, and I think no, I, Novell's still around too. I have to go check on that. I went to BYU. That was my university. So, uh, anyway, so why why do you care about Stanford? Because Stanford let these guys do all this stuff and let them, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, we're perfect. Novell bought we're perfect too, and now they're all dead. Um, so and that's all in that documentary too. By the way, I. So it's from what I understand from Stanford that let, they let people keep their IP. And that's something that's really interesting about a university. The university I went to, every single thought you had as a student belonged to the university. Uh, and so if you're interested in going to, if you're a technologist by heart and you haven't picked a college yet, make sure that, that you ask them about their IP policies. Because a lot of significant things are invented while you're in college. And, and if you, so I'm going to just put a little tack, thumbtack in this. Uh, Twitch Mark uh, College IP um, and so I'm just going to put a little mark in that because let me just say this again so when you're preparing to go to college and you are particularly if you're a smart technologist and you are bound to have really great ideas while you're in college uh, you know Linux kind of was a riff off Minix which is what Linus Torvald's professor was all about um, and just make sure that your university that you're con contemplating going to uh, has a pretty liberal policy with IP. Uh, some of the universities you go to might say, "You, you know, we own you," kind of thing, and you know, just be careful with that. Okay. And the reason this is coming up is because, as you can see in the title, we've been talking about Solaris and Stanford University, Stanford University Network Sun, which became Solaris. Uh, Stanford was a university, that, as as far as I understand, I've seen this on a documentary. Uh, has a much more liberal policy with regard to to IP, and they even let you start companies on the campus. Uh, that's I thought that was relatively, you know, not a thing. It's like hard to find that you would actually have a an entire company and you could run it off their campus, use their campus systems, and then benefit from it. Uh, so as you're choosing a college, just make sure you pick a college that's not going to hold you back. Uh, the guys who created Novell, for example. Uh, it's a different story. Um, I think some of them were there at Brigham Young University, um, uh, but 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 yeah, we'll talk about that another day. My point is just make sure you don't you know get yourself in a corner by going to a college that is going to own you. MIT, as I understand it, I haven't I didn't go there, but MIT, as I understand it, also allows you to have ownership of your own IP. So if you invent something really awesome, uh, you can take that where you where you want to, um, and that means you can release it as open source. You can be proprietary. It's up to you. I assure you of these things. So Dennis says, I assure you of these things uh, are selling to banks and insurance and heavy industry. My Hyundai is a big customer in their offshore drilling rig operations. They are not porting their software anytime soon. Wow. So that's Solaris. Yeah. And that's not even technical debt. That's just something that works that they don't need to change. That's kind of the what I what I keep finding is the way BSD people look at the world. Uh, and um, I think it's still fair to say that BSD is the go-to pick uh, uh, Oracle Spark. Wow, they still have Spark. Oh, that brings back some memories. So, what is the, even is Solaris? Solaris is a version of Unix uh, that came out kind of in response to AT and T's Unix, uh, which is really the first one. And you can watch a really fun video on that if you want to go find that on YouTube, uh, where they're actually introducing the world to 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 um, <clears throat> to Unix, <clears throat> and they actually say. Uh, one of the guys, I think it's, I think it's actually, uh, Keith Thompson, um, it's either Richie or Thompson, I don't remember, but he actually says, and so this, so we created the high level C language. <laughs> he actually says high level C language. 
because you know the original operating Unix operating system was written in assembly, uh, and then they wrote C, to, they created C uh, to finish the Unix operating system, so they re-implemented it, uh, and, and and you know in C, which is why you should still learn C. I'm sure Dennis has great great opinions on why you should learn C. Uh, it's great that we have Dennis and and El Ramingo next to each other because Ramingo is the one who convinced me to go back to teaching C to beginners. Uh, at a, at a, at an easy level so they could come to understand the computer and how it works uh, better at the lower level. <clears throat> Lycan, good to see you. Uh, I see Spark and think of it and think of the server that my work just finally got rid of about two years ago. And old Alpha Spark was horrible to find parts for. <laughs> we use it for ERP. Well, that's that's gen that's generally the conversation today, right? Uh, or I mean, that's generally what you're going to hear when it comes to uh, to that kind of stuff. So I'm, you know, I'm kind of kind of inclined to agree with that i did manage a bunch of stuff <clears throat> i don't teach the on stream i'm not i'm not worthy <laughs> um i teach enough i used to i, I was planning on teaching some on stream uh you gotta understand i work with people as young as 10 years old so when i teach something i i'd use a head first approach i am very you know meme like <laughs> i memeify my stuff uh, because it's more mnemonic and younger people can learn it a little bit better uh, I kind of straddle the fence between being a technologist and, a, and an educator and a writer and a communicator. So, so that's where I, I kind of live my life. Uh, people like Dennis, who are like really, I mean, he has a lot of really interesting thoughts on, on art as well. I've, I've watched him watching some movies and just having some great insights into them. But, but in terms of the technologist, he's like, you know, hardcore <laughs> kind of guy on that. And I, I, I see that and I recognize that in others. And I'm like, well, I'm, my strengths are communication and writing and, you know, the Read Me world, uh, which I would love you guys to help us with, uh, spreading the word about the Read Me world as we get it going. Uh, kind of an alternative to the World Wide Web we've been forced to use right now. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, yeah, Oracle Rack and the whole web stack was bought, bought from Sun, who bought from Netscape. Yep. I don't... <clears throat> Did Oracle... Oracle did buy Netscape. That's right. That's why they have the JavaScript. They have the JavaScript trademark now too. I see Spark and think of yes, uh, Fujitsu owns Spark also. Yep, they use the VS 200 mainframes. I think. Yep. Uh, I think it. I think it poured in the early 2000s. Do I teach C? Uh, kind of answer that one. Unix is a toy. Uh, the big companies use mainframes, and ZOS. You know what? Uh, I'm not gonna say bad stuff about that because I sat next to a guy when I was Nike's webmaster. Uh, internet webmaster and there was a guy who was a mainframe guy this is another story uh, there was a mainframe guy that was sat right next to me and you know total boomer great guy loved him to death one of the best guys who come over and he was taking care of his mom and all kind of thing and um, he would come over he, I kid you not I was I was like I was a, an arrogant 20 or something you know and you know I was running the the, the thing and and he come over and he goes you know we got we got Linux we got Linux on the mainframe now I think he told me that in probably, I want to say, 90... What was that? Yeah, that would have been... 90... Yeah, 97. 96, 97. Uh, at our, our another place I have a lot of experience with giving a work on the port of the Unix to IBM Z series back in 2008. Yes. Uh, and that's that's what my friend was telling me about, is that they had already, they'd already had Linux running uh, in LPARs and partitions on the mainframe. And so they were doing, this is the thing that I, just drives me crazy. Uh, you know, IBM was doing like, you know, virtual machines. They invented hypervisor uh, and they were doing all that stuff before VMware got a hold of it and made all the money and got famous for it. I'm still running a Fujitsu Oracle servers. A number of companies running prod physical processors, six virtual processors. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. In the seventies they, they did that. Yeah. And so a lot of people, you know, most of the stuff inside SCO and Oracle, Solaris, and FreeBSD still have this. <clears throat> I want to see that. Let's see here. What we got? Uh, unpublished proprietary source of ATT. I was actually just looking at uh, samples of, of copyright notices the other day because I was putting one in a shell script I'm writing. Um, yeah, look at that. Look at that, man. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. We're just having fun. It's Friday. Just fun fact Friday. Um, uh, let's see here. If dev pragma, pragma, good old pragmas. See, I'm so, 
this is one thing about C that I'm so happy that the that the LLVM languages and Go have kind of moved away from is the compilation. In fact, Pike makes a joke about it, whether you like them or not. What do you think of Pike and the and the and the and the AT and T refugees, as Brian Kentrell calls them, Dennis? I'm just, I'd really love to hear your opinion on. It. I should probably ask you on stream sometime so you can you know fully respond if you want. <laughs> so I, I'm all the all the guys who, who jumped ship and went to went to Google. I think I think most of them are still out there at Google. Uh, any, yeah. Well, I have some ranting opinions on that. <laughs> I would, I would, that's see that would tune in for that. I need to know when that was going to come because because you know I actually re highly respect Pike and 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 Thompson and um, Graysimer. Graysimer's not on the project anymore for the Go project. I've since moved on kind of to to Rust. <laughs> Let's set that aside after one or four beers. Yeah. So yeah, but but the reason I was reminded of it is because. Uh, I have learned so much about events. Yeah, yeah. Dude, oh God, our joint stream would be like a problem. <laughs> the thing, the, I the, okay. So can I just say something else I like about Mr. Dennis Last Miles? Uh, is that he he comes from? He comes. I don't know how to Dennis. I don't mean this to sound offensive. I'm just gonna blurt it out. Okay, you do love Go, and I'm looking into having a port and have ported it a few times. Nice. Uh, so what I what I, I'm gonna say here. So. This is a thing on my stream that happens a lot. Uh, it, it seems to me like people that are, you know, in the up and coming, intelligent, wonderful generations, uh, are a little bit less inclined to to fight, <laughs> and you know, and, and to rant and to hate on things. And I actually just had to do a fun video the other day about hating on the word hate. You know, hate just means extreme dislike. It doesn't mean evil and stuff. Anyway, uh, I, I I'm kind of overreaching here, but. But Dennis strikes me as the kind of guy, yeah, as that, I mean, you take it out of context, that, that statement sounds weird, right, Mac? But Dennis strikes me as the kind of guy that I kind of grew up with, uh, who they, you know, again, no shits to give, no, no fucks to give. And they, they will, they will fight you about a topic and they'll have really strong opinions, but you don't ever question the fact that they're, you know, that they're good people. You know what I mean? You don't ever, Yeah. Yeah, or, or politically correct bullshit. I don't do that. Yeah, and you know, see, this is this is the thing I like about that. And the, re the only reason I'm bringing this up is if, if if anybody from my stream goes and watches Last Miles, and because sometimes I, Dennis, I'm gonna have to just tell you straight up. Uh, occasionally, I haven't rated you because I, I've got you know young people, and I don't want to run into a Last Miles rant with all those guys. And they, you know, it's like you know they accept the M rating, and I've gone back and forth with an M and, and a non M rating on my own channel a lot of times. But the but the reason I bring that up at all is because. It's because it's, I kind of miss it. I miss, I miss the ability to state your opinion and not have to sort of backpedal off of your opinion, you know, uh, because everybody around you might end up getting, getting offended and getting pissed off and then reporting you or something like that. And I'm not talking about inappropriate things. Obviously there's a boundary there, but, but disagreeing with somebody, uh, and you know, um, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to say something that is going to be in trouble, but I've had really, really close friends who I absolutely know appreciate me and call me a moron to my face. That's moron. That's the stupidest idea I've ever heard. You're a moron. And they'll say it to my face with a smile. And I absolutely know that I'm in good standing with them. Uh, we actually had one guy put his hand through the wall during a design meeting. And um, so anyway, that, that, uh, uh, when you have facts to spit it, to spit it out, do it. Yeah, there is, there is a downside to that. And let me just say this. So, uh, there are lots of people that came from that generation and my generation and or, or that I, it's not even really a generational thing. It's just a, just a way of, of communicating and being, uh, who think it's okay to get louder. They think it's okay to get louder, to make their point, the louder they get their, that'll make them their point better. And I don't think they do it on purpose. Getting louder doesn't make your point more valid, <laughs> right? It's just like, it's like whoever's loudest wins right now. That that's stupid. Uh, I hope open bugger would be free BSD and I plan to push into production. Nice. Got the installer and the key uh, a time metadata within the file system and I have ran it on it hard. There's nothing wrong with venting with intelligence and experience is simply saying the truth may hurt. <laughs> and too mad if you don't like the color of the wallpaper or my tone. The message is the message. And oh, I'm gonna quote you on that. You you are going in my quotes list last miles. The message is the message. I got to put that on my quotes list. Where's my quotes list? Uh, because, you know, that's like, that is, 
you know, people can't separate the message and the truth from the from the person who's saying it. So it's kind of the opposite. So you have last miles telling people the message is the message, and then you have my mom telling me nobody cares how much you know until you they know how much you care. <laughs> so there's like something in the middle there, right? Yeah, if you shout it out, it has to be right. Yeah, the Me Too version sucked. I, you know, I don't. I'm not. I'm not gonna speak about that. But uh, so, oh, there's a there's a Solaris. Oh, the movie. That's a different one. I think I know what you're talking about. I want to get this quote in here. The message is the message from Dennis Last Miles uh, uh, because I I really love that. Um, so yeah, the message is the message, and you know that's. I think we need that more. I really do. I, we need we need to be respectful, and I think even Linus Torvalds agrees with that. You know, he's very opinionated. Uh, but you get my point. Go ahead and close that quote up. Uh, all right, back to what we're doing. I want to look at the C code some more. Uh, so those of you who don't know what C code is, this is it. This is what C code looks like. Uh, and you know, uh, the reason I, I brought up Bob Rob Pike and the the uh, you know the at and refugees is because one of the reasons they, they make a joke saying that the idea for Go uh, came while they were waiting 20 hours for their Go to, go to compile. And uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, he's, uh, the, the, yeah, let's just be real. The guy, you know, practically, his story, I mean, the, the write-up about how they, you know, sort of altered Unicode, he and Thompson altered Unicode on a napkin uh, oh, and it, when they got a hold of it from IBM, and then uh, it became the standard. And so, you know, every time you guys use an emoji, you know, you can partially thank Rob Pike, not just for the Go language, uh, you know, but for all of that. And and he's written his own operating systems. Uh, so we, people, I mean, I, I love Go. There's, I'm, I'm kind of souring on Go lately because of the whole generics thing. I, I just do not like. It almost feels like the Go project is getting is getting sort of derailed from its original. Uh, direction and it's starting to do weird things now that, that I don't think the original creators might have agreed with, but I could be completely wrong on that. Uh, Go Evangelist no more. I No, I still love Go. Go's got a lot of really direct usage. Uh, it's just recently some of the design decisions that are happening that over there are not uh, are not as compelling. I mean, I, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, so my last discussion about political Christmas was the main branch and Git shouldn't be called master. Well, I don't know if that solves any real-world problems. Yeah, that's true. That's a good one. Uh, my concern is that we have a generation that is being brain damaged by a political correct worldview, and they are losing the ability to disagree. Can I just, uh, amen, brother? If I had like a button to press, you know, that would cheer for that statement. Uh, I fear a both my approach with people who won't speak up. Yeah, you, uh, yeah, okay. And so, look, we're not telling you, Dennis and I are not. I don't think we're telling everybody to go be an asshole. The world would be a better place. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is learn how to have respectful disagreements. Learn how to attack bad ideas and bad tech voraciously. That's what we need. We need more attacks, not less. Because the best debate, the, the best ideas, the best tech will surface. The problem is you got to make sure you do that without attacking the person. And that's damn hard. That's really damn hard because we get really married to our ideas. I do. I know I do. You know, it's like somebody challenges a technology that I have, you know, researched for hours and hours and hours and come to a conclusion that took me hours and hours and hours to make. And now you're telling me my conclusion was false, that all that time was wasted. So all my cognitive dissonance kicks in to protect me from thinking that I was wrong. And then that feels like you got punched in the nose. <laughs> and then you react. And then you react and you have a big old fight. Learn to debate instead of instead of the literal Nazi club. Yeah. Especially when you're getting paid by a corporation. Yeah, I, have, I, I see I have code laying, laying about that goes back to 1984. <laughs> oh, I want to see that one too. Oh, look at that. 1984, some microsystems, yep. Wow, that is so cool. I mean, yeah, you could you could uh, always always avoid ad hominem, yeah, and that's hard. It's definitely hard to do that. Uh, yeah, it, it's hard. It's particularly hard when somebody's disagreement with you is uh, either religious or you know about something like that where there's you know, people's lives in, in jeopardy. Uh, political correctness and snowflakery is a problem. Uh, that I hear that GitHub is now changing the master runs. Yes, that's true. They're doing that. And um, I want to be careful here because I'm not, you know, the 
Okay, let's look at the intent. You know what I'm saying? Let's look at the intent here. So if, if we can avoid if we can avoid a master slave reference in anything, I'm good with that. You know, there's an entire Linux distro created just to avoid the word kill. <laughs> and Damon, there I'm not kidding. Go it's like go look it up. I'm not going to even talk about the name. There's actually yes, we yeah, shellcheck.net. It's really nice. Yes. Did you just find that? I I actually posted a uh, reference to that earlier. Um, this is C code still on the screen by the way in case you guys are wondering because we have last miles visiting. Um but but yeah, after a uh, few beers, I may get a get a bit loose on what on that. But I but I earned the right over five decades of worth worth work to rant a little. Yeah, and and you know that's you know what that's ultimately that's just the more the more objective experience you bring to a conclusion, the more weighty that conclusion, the stronger the opinion, and the more validated that opinion should be. Uh, you know, there's there's a saying that I've heard about in Silicon Valley that I don't that that gets bantered back and forth called strong opinions weakly held. And and I, I've wrote about I've written about this and I actually really believe it. Um, a strong opinion is not just an opinion that that you feel strongly about. It's it, it, the idea is, is that the strong opinion is an opinion that you have a lot of experience with, that you've put through the scientific method, that you've engaged with debate, uh, you know, healthy, respectful debate with people about it. And you really believe it because you have a lot of evidence to suggest that it's true. Uh, weakly held, however, means that in the light of new information, you change your opinion. And it's funny because we started streaming about this thing and this I get it, I get accused of flip flopping all the time uh, because I when I get new evidence uh, about a thing I change my opinion and and pretty pretty quickly actually uh, so anyway yeah so yeah if you have experience and you have you know now I think Dennis will admit as well that we sometimes can become married to our opinions and our ideas and then we become dogmatic about them at least I'm not saying you are but I I have done that too where you like that nice pretty uh you know let's 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 talk about one so uh quantum <laughs> you know like the like the Higgs boson discoveries right and they they didn't find supersymmetry, right? It's this beautiful idea. Uh, this has to be true. Supersymmetry is so awesome. It has to be true. And and they're so married and dogmatic to that scientific idea that when the atomic weight of the Higgs boson didn't didn't prove that, that supersymmetry was true, nor did it prove that the alternative, this sort of chaos uh, approach was true, that they got, you know, kind of triggered because hey, it, my beautiful theory and opinion that I spent my whole life making has to be true. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. What internet were they removed from the blacklist? Oh, not related to people of color. It's way older. Yeah. Master. Yeah. Master slave. Yeah. Well, there, I mean, come on. What are we going to do? Disk drives, master and slaves, right? How many of you have, have, have installed your own hard drives? You have like, yeah, like one back in the old IDE days, I, you know, hard drives you have a master hard drive and then you have the slave hard drives that's the what they're called and we're not going to change that and again i have all of the compassion and empathy that i possibly can have as an old white guy i don't even want to say anything because i because i'm already you know in a position to not even begin to understand it so i i am not making a comment on what's going on right now i'm just stating that th that word specifically uh doesn't come from slavery Right. It it was used in slavery, but but it does that terminology is does not or originate in slavery. Um, just like the word daemon uh, doesn't originate in occult devil worship. <laughs> I mean, come on, the Berkeley mascot is a little demon. <laughs> so it can't we must make a different Unix. Uh, right. <laughs> Dennis, you're a devil worshiper because you're a BSD guy. <laughs> So, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, pretty good, yeah. Hard disk, those newfangled things. <laughs> oh, you win! Dennis wins the cool hipster war for using IBM six five six two five zero BPI tapes for storage. The closest I got to that was writing an automated system to manage uh, to manage our tape our Tivoli tape devices, and I would go change out the tapes. 
Hey, you guys haven't lived until you've seen a tape device machine. We got to find one. Uh, let's see if I can find a video of one. You got, I mean, these, these, these people, <laughs> these people, you guys have become these people. Uh, they have no idea what tape storage is about. I mean, cause I don't think, I don't think it's a thing anymore. Right? Oh yeah. Here we go. <laughs> of course. Let us look at that face. That's pretty much. <laughs> I love Linus Does Tech, and that's the perfect reaction from somebody today that you show you show a tape device to. <laughs> like, what? Uh, he's pretty funny. Anyway, I, I like watching him too. He's pretty he's pretty funny. Uh, before A drives, oh god. So I mean, it's it's random Friday. If you don't like it, <laughs> go away. <laughs> We're having fun. Save first basic programs in high school on paper tapes. Yes. We talked about that before. I loaded from a cassette on an Atari 400. I know I'm not. This is this is nothing. This is nothing compared to what my my actually my grandfather ran off actual tapes. You know the large tapes. This is back when you had computer operators. You weren't allowed to touch a computer. You had to put your program on uh, on cards in the incoming slot. You couldn't even go in the room with the computer. And they would take the cards on the other side. And if you were really lucky, they would run your program. They would actually run it once and give you the output on a piece of paper. You'd have to go back and check it all out. Tapes, you got a good one? Oh, that's that's exactly what I was talking about. That's exactly what I was talking about right there, man. This is my grandpa I used these things. This looks like it looks like it looks like straight out of a Star Trek episode. <laughs> everybody, everybody on Twitch has been showing all these Star Trek stuff. Remember, we had to run a tape back in the beginning before you deliver the tape back to the dealership. Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I think German pension insurance still uses tape storage. Yeah, we well, used to use five and a quarter floppies for our nuclear arsenal. Thank God, because nobody can hack it. Long-term story tapes are still in use. Yes, they totally are. Uh, and they will be for a long time, right? Uh, anybody ever play around with microfiche? It's a different technology, but I used to do genealogy a lot when I was Mormon. Another story for another day. Uh, but you ever play around with microfiche? Microfish are freaking amazing. I mean, it's so cool. It's like they figured out a way to shrink down. It's like pre-silicon days. They figured out a way to shrink down plastic to microscopic sizes. And you like you like move around the micro the microscope to read it. Uh, but if you if you go back and look at like any old newspaper, uh, it's not digital, of course. So we're not, we're not we're talking about it's a different not a, it's not a computer technology. But it was you know one of the technologies of the day that I just find really fascinating from like you know like. 50s tech you know so yeah you did operate those yeah let's see if we can find um i want to see if i can i can actually find a while those were still uh let's see well those were still in use on ibm 3090 msa systems i sometimes had to pick up the untold lengths of it when the air tunnel feed got screwed up and to open the door and it all spilled over the floor and then you have to carefully rewind the tape oh my god <laughs> refeed it i feel your pain my friend Oh no, we're gonna have Chris over here too? What the heck? Oh, we, we can't plan on doing anything productive if Chris comes over. <laughs> Seriously, that's like, so let's talk, I mean, tapes guys, tapes. So here's here's modern tape drives. So modern, uh, so modern, yeah. <laughs> modern, modern, it's funny because we're like geeking out, but we're also talking about the old stuff. <laughs> modern, modern tape drives. Let me see if I can find one. Uh, uh, the Tivoli, I was on the Tivoli team. This is before IBM bought the Tivoli company and had such a good brand. They, they, they put the name Tivoli on everything. <laughs> it was, it was everywhere. And so if somebody said Tivoli, they said, that, Oh, how's it going? They would say, they would say, Hey, this is, we're using Tivoli. We're Tivoli. I'm like, what are you talking about? Tivoli storage manager. Are you talking about Tivoli orchestration? Tivoli what? Tivoli what? Tivoli rational rows that they bought. So they put the word Tivoli on everything. And I was actually on the Tivoli team at the end there how's it going guys if the raiders are here welcome raiders uh dennis and i are just geeking out a little bit hey chris i got a question for you don't you leave without me letting you ask a question uh i have a i have a, a question i want to ask of another seasoned linux user but uh all the raiders coming over i'm super happy to share that um dennis last miles uh is here in the audience uh you screw TSM. You say Joe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so, so we've been talking about some of this. We've just been geeking out and talking about old stuff. 
uh, we were talking about some C in the day. Uh, uh, we were talking about, uh, yeah, welcome Raiders. We were talking about, um, so the last thing we were just showing is good old tape dryers. I get it's Friday. It's totally, you know, random Friday. We're just having fun. And, uh, for some reason we just started geeking out about about tape drives and and we're looking at that i mean check it out guys that's like yeah you have to like take those tapes in and out <laughs> right it's fun day yes uh so, some people uh some people still use it to, to, to for backup more reliably they claim yeah uh, i had a client that used the tape for 10 years seriously yeah no he actually dennis was right saying he was writing some tape systems like you know to use the tape drives and i'm i'm like I, I wrote the software that would like some not software i wrote some some scripts let's say uh that would do some of the automated tape transfers and thing uh yeah oh modern tapes this is a pretty reliable yeah so it's the mr robot thing you guys know about this mr robot scene where he he creates a plan and he melts all the tapes in the thing because he says the emollient level on the tape is like uh over 80 degrees fahrenheit or something like that do you guys remember this this scene? He makes a little Raspberry Pi and he he puts he goes in the bathroom and puts it on the he, he puts it, I'm you know spoiler alert you know he puts it in, he connects it into the to the climate system and um and like one of these Stone Mountain kind of tape storage places. If you're gonna be, if you're a noob and you're watching this like, what the hell is tape? So this is what tape is good for and what it's still being used for apparently. Uh, so tape tape is the way to do long term storage that almost costs nothing. Right. Um, so what they do is they'll put all the ones and zeros on analog. You know, this is still I guess it's technically it's digital and they'll write it all on a, on a tape. Usually the tape doesn't like it's not big like these old ones, but it's more like the one that was in that Linus video here like this. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that I use to to handle. And and then you, you have to swap out these tapes pretty regularly to take backups of like enterprise data and, um, you know, insurance companies stuff like that. And then they would take these tapes and they would load them into an armored car uh raid five oh god and they would take him into an ar armored car and then they would go and they would put them in the in the cliff somewhere you know in solid granite carved out places and then that's how they do backup and they still do that today apparently so people were saying about that uh so if you're a system administrator and that's the term that people used to use before it got all pejorative and shot down by google saying oh we don't do system administrator we call them site reliability engineers you know i that triggers me, obviously, the way I'm saying it. Mr. Robot, I thought Elliot was trying to overheat the UPS to cause the data backup sites to burn down. No, he was trying to raise, that's a misconception. <laughs> he was trying to raise the heat level. Actually, he does a little demonstration where he drops the tape on top of the burner at the arcade. You guys remember that scene? Uh, because if you get the tape hot, hot enough, it'll just melt. Uh, and yeah, uh, raid, raid 10 is the only true raid. Oh God. <laughs> oh, another, another one. Uh, yeah, stuff like the the quantum and tape storage, they'll steal backup tape drives. Yes. Oh gosh, I want to pull that one up too. But I'm gonna. I don't want to lose these. So let me. Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's exactly. We used to script these things. That's the sun one. Oh my god, that is the sun. You have one. This is in your house. Wait, are you taking pictures from your house? <laughs> this is so cool. Yeah, that is definitely yours. Look at that thing. Oh man, that is so, that brings me back so, oh, Sunmate, uh, you know what, I gotta tell you, just taken just now, you, ugh. okay, so I, I want to be independently wealthy, <laughs> so, so that I can buy like old Sun hardware, and because I, when I see the Sun logo, you have no idea, it's like, like, it like sends me back to this time when I first discovered Unix, you know, and, and I was I was working with these these absolute awesome awesome dudes in Portland, Oregon. Joey, Joey, if you are out there, my man, thank you so much for entering my life. I mean, I actually got a chance to work with these guys, Skizix, if you're there, you know. And and they 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 didn't really take me under the wing. That is not the way to say it. <laughs> they pretty much you know beat me up and asked dumb questions and like well like like. Man, I wish I could have Solaris at home. Dude, just get Linux. <laughs> so I actually did. I installed Mock Linux. Some of you in the audience might actually know what that is. I actually installed Mock Linux on an IBM PowerPC, and I know Dennis knows what that is. <laughs> it was back in the RISC days when Macs had RISC chips. 
and, then, and IBM and, and Apple had that like awkward relationship for how many years? You guys remember that? Am I still streaming? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. You guys remember that? I kind of want to think. You have that running? Really? Wow. That's so funny. Here we go. There's some more tape drives. Let's see if we can find here. Um, quantum security reliability. Yeah. Yep. There it is. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 So here we go. We have a quantum computer long-term data storage. So you don't need for a dependable efficient way. Um, let's help. No one can ignore data protection. This is, this is like straight out of Mr. Robot. Um, you know, it's like, yeah, there's your, this is a device though. Yep. Stock security footage. <laughs> I have a good HDDs, lasts about 20 years, and reasonable I.O. even, yeah. Does anybody know what the lifetime is of a CD? I, I, I've often wondered that. I put a lot of stuff on CDs. Must have the stock, the stock stuff. Yeah, right. So these these things are so cool. Um, 10 years is the rate of life for a CD-ROM. Hey, fun fact for the noobs out there, uh, and I say that with the greatest of affection for you. Uh, guess where... Tar command comes from. Since we're talking about tape, let's do a little bit of educational thing. Anybody out there? Is it, today's the first day that they learned? Today I learned about tar. Yep, there you go. Tar. We can thank all this old tape architecture for the tar utility, because that's what it was made for. Yep, tape archives, uh, and we still to this day we use it, which is funny because you know you got you got Java jar files, which are sort of influenced by tar so you can trace the you know you can trace trace it all the way back from the the first time people started using tape you know, all the way up until you got jar files uh and it wasn't a lot of compression uh, does anybody know does anybody well, last month i wonder if you know oh red staple at scale wait 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 oh god <laughs> i might have to save this picture just because i because i it'll be the It'll be, it'll be, it'll be proof the last miles actually. Holy cow. He put me on his, look at those sun thing. I can't. I'm so jealous. So let me finish that thought. This sun logo makes me have like warm fuzzies. <laughs> I feel so good just looking at the sun logo. It's like, it's like going home, you know, for school. Uh, after being, you know, going to your favorite, you know, swimming hole. <laughs> When I see the sun logo, oh man, it just makes me so happy. It just like washes over me because I remember learning. I, I okay, I'm gonna share something here. It's a little bit. This is a little bit. I need to get a sun tattoo. I know, I know. So, you know, it, it, people just like it's got too much baggage now. That's unfortunate, but it's true. So, sun is cool. They invented Java. Don't get me started on that. Largest marketing campaign for a language in history. Five hundred thousand dollars was in fact go read about that it's pretty amazing java is like i'm pretty sure it's the only language that had a massive massive uh scott Manelli always trolling bill gates yes oh my god yes yeah that was what was happening so you guys don't know who that is bill gates started microsoft <laughs> some of the people watching might not even know that at this point uh you know there'll come a time when people will not, not well they not only know what sun is they don't even know who bill gates is let alone Scott McNeely. Yeah, every time I see a Sun logo, I feel an urge to punch someone in the face. <laughs> oh God, that's funny. When I get a Sun component, I'm going to paint it tan, and then it's then it's a Sun. Ha ha. Oh my God. <laughs> no, it's like the reason I have such good feelings about it. I know that sounds really weird, but is it's like I used to look forward to going into work. Because you couldn't use Linux at home. You couldn't use Unix at home. Guys, guys. So so, so imagine a world. Uh, I'm a professional poker <laughs> dad joker. <laughs> so I can... Yes, please do, Last Miles. Well, uh, Scott Stock took Bill to court and he won. Yes, he did. Because of the Java disaster when MS broke Java on purpose to protect the Windows desktop. Old school Microsoft, no doubt about that. That is definitely going to be a fun one to hear about. Uh, but I just... Uh, so... I, I kind of want people to, to to just stop and take note of how awesome they have it. 
in the 90s, which is only 20 years ago, right? In, in the 90s, obviously, Dennis had access. He had privileged access. Thank God I hate him because he had so much access to the Unix early on. And that's my point. There were times when if you went to college, you got excited to go into college and use Unix. Because why? Because it was the only time you were going to get to use Unix. This is why Sun exploded onto the scene. Sun exploded onto the scene because there was this pent up, oh, please, 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 can I use Unix? You know, and if you're lucky, 30 years ago, that's true. Well, I'm thinking 90, uh, you know what? To be fair, when I say 90s, I always mean like 96. So you're absolutely right. My math is off. Um, but, but yeah, so it, it was just yesterday. I know Dennis is like, it, it's my, my, but the point I'm trying to make is, is that when, how's it going, Alexander? Uh, Alexander Mikhail, Ruski Gavrashi. Uh, but Solaris zones for university e-learning platform 15 years ago. Solaris still rocks. It does. And so, you know, but, but, but the reason I'm talking about this is there may be some people who don't understand. They're Linux people, right? I don't think you understand how monumentally huge Linux was for us. The, the, I spent, I don't know how many hours trying to get Linux, which is really what I thought was just Unix, trying to get Unix to run on my Mac, Power Mac, you know, on my, not a Power Mac. It was, uh, you know, it was a, yeah, it was a power Mac. No, it was back. I don't even remember what it was called. It had the mock kernel. So, you know, and only because I wanted a command line. I just wanted a command line. You could not get a. Okay, I'm going to calm down now. I'm going to calm down and I'm going to take some coffee to calm down. But I'm going to make a point here. And it's going to it's going to sound like I'm, uh, I'm the old guy telling you should appreciate your blah, blah, blah. And I don't care. So there was a time that I lived through where not only could you not use a computer, you could not use a command line. You couldn't. You know, and then there was a time where you had to use a command line, which is really funny. So, so yeah, you could, you definitely couldn't use Sun. If you wanted to use a true Unix system, you had to be a privileged person who was in a university uh, or you had to be going to a university that was lucky enough to have one of the big systems like Berkeley. Uh, and I wasn't. Uh, or, or, you know, when I got to go to work and I got to sit at a Sun workstation, just like the ones that Last Miles was using, when I got to sit at a Sun workstation, I would get giddy. I would get physically giddy. <laughs> I would get physically giddy. Uh, the tape drives are so expensive here in Australia. What? Really? Uh, Next brought Unix like to you for free. We get it. Okay. I know. You're like done with me saying anything more about it. But I, it was a big deal. It was a big deal. And I don't think other people sometimes understand how big a deal it was. So there. Come on, how dare you forget the glorious days of MS DOS? <sighs> Did you know that DOS stands for Dirty Operating System? That's the actual original name. Mm hmm. Yep. Go look that up. Uh, that's uh, the reference for that is. Um, Triumph of the Nerds. Yeah, great documentary. Everybody should watch it. It's free on YouTube. Set in the 80s. Talks about the PC invent, uh, the inv advent of the PC. Goes through the whole Silicon Graphics days as well. Uh, I'm done when hearing older people cheering about Linux. Seriously, you being you. <laughs> Gates, brought, Gates bought it. Disk operating system. It, well, I, I don't know. It wasn't disk. It wasn't disk operating system. Originally, it was it was dirty. QDOS was the original quick and dirty. Oh, I think you might be right. Chris has got me on that one, yeah. Hey, Chris, while you're here, since I, since you're here, let me ask you a question before you guys take a break because we all need to take a break. And, I mean, I'm, we'll, I'll be here all day. No, but I, I love taking... I, I just need to know when to raid you guys. Uh, QDOS is... And, and, and the amazing kill there. Yes, that's right. And if you guys don't know what that is, please, please, please watch Triumph of the Nerds. You can go watch it for free. Uh, Brenchley... Uh, Peter Brenchley, which is his writer name. Gary Kildall, yes. Yep, the one who got totally roasted. Uh, if, if you want to see what actually happened to this guy, actually, we can watch this. This is not This is not bad. I'm going to turn down my music for just a second. Uh, this is like mandatory viewing, pretty much. Uh, Triumph of the Nerds on... Uh, here it is. Impressing their friends. Uh, there's, a, there's. I'm trying to find a segment on Gary Kildall. But this is, um, it's a three-part series. It's just really, really cool. Uh, you're fetching a beer. <laughs> I might have to actually do that myself. But, but so yeah, I mean, guys, take it. If you need to take a break or something. So, 
I'm going to find the YouTube copy just cause, uh, let's see, part of the transmitters part one, Vimeo, um, transmitters part one, the rise of the accidental. So if you want to understand what happened during how PCs came to be, it's a really entertaining, uh, documentary about it, uh, back in the day. Yeah. It's like all, all four by nine or whatever. I'll stream it a bit. Yeah, because I need to go. <laughs> I need to go get stuff ready for work and stuff. But. Why am I telling you this at a basketball game? Well, I like the game, but mainly it's because of that guy down there. That guy down there. That's not... That's the other guy who got rich. His name is Paul Allen. Four, four by three, thanks. <laughs> Don't go. Basketball team, their arena, even the dancers. Basketball courts are the places former IBM execs go. I mean, former Microsoft execs go to. Twenty years ago, Alan and his high school friend Bill Gates were running a two-man software company called Microsoft. <laughs> Why, what's up with that, Haiti? You guys are always like. Alan is richer than God, and Gates. You found it. Good, yeah. Gabe Newell also brought to the club. We found it. Yes, true. Yep, Gabe is a. Gabe is definitely a Microsoft. Royalty. And communicate. It's hard to believe that 20 years yeah. ago there were no personal computers. <laughs> now it's the third largest industry in the world, somewhere between energy production and illegal drugs. And illegal drugs. And the most amazing thing of all is that it happened by accident. It happened by accident. So their friends. Uh, there's another one. Actually, there's another. There's another nerd's video. Uh, there's another nerd's video documentary. If you want to watch it, that um, it's called Triumph of the Nerds Two. Uh, and that's the one that goes all through Sun Microsystems and 3Com and all the all the, the creation of Ethernet and um, uh, also which all came from Palo Alto, uh, which is kind of an interesting fact, fun fact. Uh, some of you guys might not know this, but uh, so Palo Alto Research Labs, which was buried inside of Xerox that Xerox really did never appreciate properly, uh, they invented object oriented programming. Uh, they invented the graphic user interface. They actually didn't. They watched Heng Engelbart about that and they got it from a lot of those guys in Palo Alto saw the the, the mother of all demos and I'm, I'm going to show you some other mandatory viewing uh, the mother of all demos uh, this is where the mouse was invented and if you want to read the whole story of this uh, there's a there's a book called the innovators uh, by the same guy who did the um, the biography of uh, of Steve Jobs 1968 one year after I was born uh, as I give away my age there it's pretty long. Uh, it's kind of funny because this was back in the time where people were singing hymns at IBM and people were doing the work and people like Engelbart were getting the credit <laughs> back in those days. He did it. To us. Who invented it then? Ramingu. Am I wrong again? So you know, because people say Chuck Norris <laughs> he invented a copy and paste marking text. This is true. Yeah. Oh, I see. I and the graphic like user interface, right, with mouse. That our computer supplies. So nowadays to do the Brits did. On here. Interesting. So this characterizes the way I could sit here. And Xerox did not invent it. Piece of paper. Are you saying okay? Xerox didn't invent it. No, that would. That's what I'm talking about. The Palo. That's actually a misconception that I had. And if you know something other than that, let me know. Uh, for the radar systems. Okay. Yeah, Xerox actually, so this is actually one of the most common misconceptions. I didn't learn the right answer to this until my 40s. Uh, and for the longest time, I thought the Palo Alto Xerox lab was where the mouse was invented. Turns out those people saw Engelbart. They learned about the mouse from other places and they just implemented it. They just implemented it. They're the first to really get popularity implemented. Of course, that's what Steve Jobs said he saw. And that's in that video, by the way. Uh, and and he said that he had seen it. Um Media Wiki computer, computer mouse. Project. Really? You're going to give me a Wikipedia? We have a visitor who is here. What are you bringing me? Snacks. You're bringing, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Um, so I guess I got my, I can watch this thing and turn the sound down. So, so we're not going to watch the whole thing. That's a but. good start. I'll sit here and say I'd like to load that in. So. All right. Very sorry about that. Sorry about that. I love the noises. The noises are my favorite part. <laughs> so I'm putting in an entity called a statement. I'm putting in an entity, entity called, called a words. statement. 
1960 <laughs> set, guys. Yeah, if you got to go to lunch, go take off. Hey, Chris, I just wanted to ask you one thing. So maybe can you just put a thumbtack in this? I'll just tell you right now because I'm going to go eat too. Um, uh, we, we're, we're, doing, we're kind of doing a comparison versus um, WSL and starting out with a virtual machine. And I think I've all but decided that starting out beginners with a virtual machine is the right way to go because it's going to be a consistent experience when they put it on hardware uh, if they have the horsepower to do so. Uh, we pretty much concluded that, but I wanted to see what your take was on that. Um, if you think that VM is way better. Okay, that's all. I, I, I thought maybe you would agree with that, but I just kind of wanted to get your input on that because I know uh, there is no system D. Ooh, that's, I'm talking about that too. Um, and WS, But see, WSL, you know, I don't know. Uh, the main, I'm, the, the shallow reason I'm having particularly young beginners do this uh, uh, is the correct way to proceed. <laughs> Not uh, not WSL. All right. Well, wow. There's overwhelming uh, consensus on that point. So I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. Just compiling Hugo takes forever for simple size. That's true too. In WSL, this is true. And if they want to get into development and they want to do any like C and Rust or anything, so uh, well, there you have it. You have you have Chris and Dennis Last Miles all agreeing together. So uh, you know this 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 stream is done. <laughs> Because that was really all I wanted to find out. Uh, so status, uh, where did the mouse come from? Like that's gonna pull him in. Like I care. <laughs> Why screw Linux? <laughs> I oh, like I I gotta quote you on that. I'm going to quote you again on that. All right. While well, he's talking, I have a, a statement with some entities words, and I can do some <laughs> operations on these. Fish, Engelbart and the fish. That word like copy after itself. In fact, that yeah. the words I like for actual work. Itself. Yeah, I can just do this a I few times right. and get a bit of uh, material there. And there are other entities like text. Say after there, I'd like to copy from that entity point to that. Go point, to VMware. Yeah, it'll copy it. Right? Yep, that's exactly so what I've been suggesting. It feels good to have you. On my that. blank piece of paper, and then I'd say, well, this is going to be more important than it looks. So like this stuff, go to VMware, ESXi e e e e clusters. I wrote some pro code to integrate with the ESXi stuff. And it says, well, I need a name. Yep. I'll give it a name. The I'll mouse from Park. Mouse. Okay, Dennis, you got to justify that because it. look at what he's about to use one. So help me understand. See, I used to think it was from Park too, and I don't know if I agree. I, I, I did for years until my 40s, I thought it. But th there's a mouse right there in 1968. So, you know, I didn't know about this. I didn't know about this 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 presentation until uh, probably 10, 15 years ago. And ever since then, I've been like, I'm giving. Yeah, take care, Chris. Thanks for the uh, insight there. Kimu 90% of the time, and then the other VM products. Yeah, and I actually want to work into having people use Kimu, but they got it. We're talking. I'm talking about beginners who don't know how to use Linux at all. I've never put it on anything, that, right? The root from there to there. So I can look at that and say, hmm, probably goes off the screen. It'd be interesting yeah. if I could ask the computer to call Somebody sent us the perhaps to show me just the first line of each of those statements. Oh god, I can't I read anything. So it did. This is one aspect of what we'll use over and over again through this presentation um, called view control. Where is it? Where, Trackball. No matter where in the file we're Someone looking, sent me a URL. We can ask it to use any one of a large Who sent me the URL on the constructing a computer mouse there it is point in the file that best suits our need at the time small this distance to move the mouse some meters. people move it over three meters so i'll say well i have this i don't want them all to be statement one so i'll just replace the word there with a um how about that one with a three computer mouse history i do not like the graphics the graphics can bite me so i can look and say all right got statements one two three and four if I'd like to make them a little prettier, All right. I can, uh, hmm. Oh, ball tracker. This, this guy, yeah. The trackball related pointing device was invented in 1946. Really? Who would have guessed that Wikipedia had something? I hope you can tell. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. So I can get it leaned up. Lined up, and I can say, for instance, other entities like an invisible oh, string. I don't food. know whether that's tabs or characters in there, but I can say if I want to and place that invisible, replace that invisible string with just one character. Here goes your cut and paste. Right here. That one. Space, and it'll do it. So 
I can look at that and say I have files, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I've named them that way. And then he goes home, honey, sort of a pain I have a way for you to do your shopping list. To number them themselves. <laughs> and one of the views is such that it will give you a list. We've come so far, guys. I mean, we've come so far. 1968. This is 1968. And I can output them. So we've seen ways to work what fairly fast. my mind is they put people on the moon back then. In a file, create a file. I can delete that file or mess it up considerably. Like if I'm going to say I want to delete that word by accidentally hit that entity instead, watch what happens. Look, he's even doing transparency, picture in picture. This is the whole thing. There's nothing. That occasion, you know how they did it? So you say, I, they had television cameras pointing to screens, and then they would combine the screens. As it was, I last it's crazy. They have. The it's all analog. All of it's analog. Save enough. Well, I'm through with this example right now. Let me go to a file that I prepared. Just after my wife called me and said, uh, no, home, but this is, shopping for yeah. So as soon as she said that, I, uh, he I does sound like he's on the moon, doesn't he? <laughs> Let's see, from the article, the Xerox Alto was one of the first computers designed for individual use in 1973. It was the first modern shopping computer to use a mouse. Okay, so, um, well, that's great to know. Thank you for that. So that was the first one that actually went in production. Yes, those are numbers, numbered statements. Uh, for, GUI, for GUI, for GUI, right. Like I can point to 10, yeah, they put it at the top, Jobs gives them credit for that, for sure. Point to but yeah, so Palo Alto, they invented Ethernet. They invented object-oriented programming. Well, um, when you're ready to go shopping, small talk, the small talk system. So let me jump and um, and I can do things like begin to uh, organize at least they, well. you know, I'd be really yeah, interested to see if small talk is class-based object-oriented programming and hear what Jim Copeland has to say about that. Right because anyway, aspirin doesn't really belong there. Uh, I think mostly this was on an Apple computer. Well, uh, it's ironic, Apple though. never got popular where I live. Yeah. I would begin to have a lot of trouble keeping that straight. I gotta tell you, I was just, I kind of was slow coming over uh, to the Macintosh. Uh, uh, I liked, I liked Word Perfect so much better than Word on a Mac. I didn't like all the graphic stuff. I never have. I mean, let me be real. Should I? Good night, guys. Yeah, we're just, I'm just eating lunch and watching old videos. Thank you for dropping by, everybody who's still here or wants to stay around. Hi there. Yeah. I, I suspect that something's going wrong. And I would call Bye, the digital. Or the hardware man. <laughs> and tell him I made it. <laughs> produce. <laughs> I really haven't warmed up to this thing. Yet. Yeah, next step was awesome. Well, produce, I'll categorize yeah. things. Let me, uh, yeah. Look at it that way, and I'll say, let me move. It was '93, right? For produce, carrots, and I'd like to subcategorize it <laughs> so it moves. There it yeah. Is. You know how that went, right, Peter? You know how that whole went down, right? Yeah. Go start a stream. Last mouse. Can I? Can I raid you? Go start one up, and I'll raid you, so I can go back to work. <laughs> I need to work. Yeah, we'll go raid you. I'd love to have you show him, show him some stuff. I'm categorizing things like that, and if I looked at the numbers now, I'd find that these these items fit under there as a subset. Steve Jobs was asked to come back to Apple, but he said, "I'm not coming back unless I can bring my next box." I, what I want to know, this is a thing I never, I've never gotten the story on. I need to read on it. I want to know how Steve Jobs. Figured out to steal BSD. So part of our view control, besides this thing we've shown you of showing numbers or not, is and I think he just copied Silicon Graphics. Show you some of these different levels or not. I can say I only want to see two levels, or only one level deep in there. It makes it very yeah. nice for study. Yeah. Or I can do something like they I did, say, but I don't. I want to know where they found out about BSD and where they got it. Open up one level below it and only yeah. Show me. Next up had BSD in it. And another level if I wish, and then no numbers. In fact. You name, you name on a on a on a Mac for a long time reported BSD, and then they changed it to Darwin. I don't know. I don't have any information on that. I wish I did. Well, suppose I work for some time at this, and then yeah. follow my wife to get the rest of the list. I'd eventually end up. I want to know how he figured out to do next step. What I think I have a feeling he saw Silicon Graphics, because Silicon Graphics was was just destroying it. They were. All over the place for as workstation. Let me see what I'm supposed to get 
and then um uh, uh and then what you know uh they were destroying it as a workstation how's it going mem theory uh that's my motto for day windows background services looks like duck and cover video it kind of does Back when, if you were a technologist, instead of having a beard and, uh, you know, hipster glasses, <laughs> you had to have a tie and sock garters. I'm not lying. You would get in trouble for not wearing your sock garters at IBM. You don't look, you're, you're disrespecting the company. And you would sing hymns. IBM, Watson, men, partners of TJ. Or if I wish... I can add it. <laughs> I should really just go eat this. Added this text in there and say jump to the last mile's there so I can rate him. That, it'll go to a carrots. What fun <laughs> Yeah. Carrots. <laughs> oh what fun to sell his products night and day. Hey, that's actually the lyrics. They were singing about selling IBM products and joyously. That's why we are so gay. Actual words. Go look it up. <laughs> the IBM hymn. There's like multiple IBM hymns you had to sing. Crazy man. <clears throat> who can we? Who can we? I guess. Uh, is he on? My stream title. Oh, there you are. Last miles. Um. Friday we're computer day. Okay, I'm gonna I'm rating you right now. I assume you're up. Right? Are you on? This is all IRC by the way, Dennis. If you wanna catch the IRC. Um So okay, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you I mean if you haven't set up yet, if you have IRC set up, come in on the channel, let me know. Or if somebody else you can have a minion let me know and I'll just I'll just raid. I actually I really do have to go get some stuff done, but it's been so much fun on this Friday. You know what? Maybe so I'll venture out and get some and whiskey. No, light beer for me. I hate that I have to drink light beer now. I hate getting old. Can I just say? Sucks. It's not fun. So I can name it yeah, I know. I can, I can rate him. I don't think he's up yet. I can ask to see the name, or I can ask not to see the names. Depending on which. Right now we happen not to be seeing Beacon Bot's on too. Good for him. That's a guy to go watch too, guys. Go watch Beacon Bot too if you want to learn how to code and stuff. So look what else we can do in here. I know, That's I know, structure. Dennis, I know. For some reason all of a sudden I can't do alcohol. I almost had an anaphylactic shock last night from the wine. The I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> We can compare notes later, right? But there's another thing I, I get the sense that when you're one of these guys who's going to be like well preserved and live until they're 92 or <laughs> longer. Yeah, I was going to say if you guys if you guys want to go raid Vegan Bot, I'm going to raid Last Miles today. But yeah, I know, I don't, I know, I know, I know. It's kind of funny. It's like I can't do alcohol. It sucks. It's like my it's like my my torture. And, you know, raised Mormon for 40 years, no alcohol. All of a sudden, I get to be 50. I can't do alcohol very much. I'd be like, George, I know. You're, 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 it's pretty obvious. You're going to be like totally, totally, you know. I'm going to, I mean, I love me some, some whiskey or scotch. My favorite is actually, I'm going to, I'm going to admit, my favorite is cognac. Cognac is hands down my favorite. Uh, if you can't handle it, don't drink it. Well, I don't know. It's not about not handling it. I, 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 it's, it's a long story. Go for the raid. Raiders prepare. I'm actually going to interject instead of just doing my command here. Last miles. Oh, wait. Hey, last miles. Let me give you the, give you one. I don't know if you care for one, but if you want my little Twitch script, you can rip apart. Uh, I'm sure you can get ideas out of there. If nothing more. Uh, so Twitch, uh, the other, one you, the other one I think you probably would like. Uh, let me just give you this one too if you want. Um, and yeah, so and then I'm going to go ahead and do a Twitch raid. Uh, oh, of course, everybody who, who wants the fish, there's the fish. So those are the three things I generally give people when they come. And uh, Twitch raid, Mr. Last Miles. And I'm going to go ahead and kick it in gear. It, it has far too long of a, has far too long of a, of a cooldown. 
the, on the rating thing. It like makes me crazy, but uh, it's not as crazy as using a graphic interface. <laughs> so, uh, here it comes. 83 viewers. Raid now. Bye.